Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Bots and Stuff. Today I'd like to go over our first televised fight against Huge, and I'll briefly address what happened in our first unaired fight that was a YouTube exclusive against Rampage as well. Hopefully you've now seen both of those fights, if not, spoilers ahead. So, our YouTube exclusive fight against Rampage. Rampage was a returning bot, but not one we expected to be a huge challenge for us. Retrograde is designed to fight wedged vertical spinners, and showed how in that match with a super quick knockout. We got a wheel as a trophy from Rampage. They're a really nice group of kids. After that fight, we had some minor repairs to do for our undercutter, and needed to adjust how it was attached to the shaft slightly. But ultimately, we were happy we showed that the lifter and undercutter did what they were designed to do. We found out with about a day's notice that we would be fighting huge next. We realized this could easily total our entire robot, so we started building up a brand new frame. This new frame would have a different rear base plate that completely ditched the undercutter billet, as we had no faith in it doing anything to Huge's Tegris wheels, and we needed the extra 50 pounds or so that that gave us for added armor. We added thick steel plates to the front in case they spun up, and rubber mounted spaced off steel guards on top in case they spun down. I was really hoping they would spin down, since I figured we had a slightly better chance of taking those hits, but I knew it was going to be a rough fight either way. Before I discuss the damage from the fight, I just want to say I have no hard feelings towards Jonathan Schultz. In fact, I might not be on this team if not for him. I met Jonathan first at Motorama back in 2018, which was my first ever robot combat event. And when I came back the following year from Motorama 2019, he let me work with him to fix the 30 pound version of Huge, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Jonathan's an amazing, friendly, and kind person. But everyone gets influenced by adrenaline in the middle of a fight, and we're all here to put on a show. All right, so allow me to introduce Aaron Lucas. Aaron is the captain and lead designer and mechanical engineer behind Retrograde. He lives in Los Angeles and also got together the whole group of people for the most part that helped work on Retrograde who are all fellow Los Angeles locals with him. The Boston Stuff Robotics team is kind of divided up quite a bit. I am personally in the East Coast, but Aaron lives on the West Coast with the rest of the Retrograde team in LA. Yep, that's right. So yeah, I personally actually never got to see Retrograde in person even once before I got to the filming for the event. And I was the only person besides Aaron on the team with any prior combat robotics experience, if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah, and, and that's kind of how it's been with Bloodsport the last few years. Um, everyone other than Justin uh, is not based in Boston. So... Our team has operated remotely for most of its existence. So let's talk about what prior design aspects you put in some thought to as to how to prepare Retrograde to fight an opponent like Huge. I mean, Huge is a very unique opponent. There is only one Huge. There's only one bot that really hits like Huge. So what did you do to prepare for a bot that is Huge? Yeah, Huge is not the robot that Retrograde was designed to fight at all. Um, you know, we were trying to counter the long fork vert meta uh, when we came up with the design for retrograde. And of course you try to think through strategy for each robot in the field because you know that you might have to fight everyone at some point. Um, so we had definitely thought about what to do if we fought huge. And uh, you know, there's always trade-offs you have to make when you're designing, especially with a, a brand new robot. Uh, and it's it's hard to configure for every possible situation. And, um, you know, we, we wanted to focus really on the core concept. And so we had some top armor prepared. Um, we knew that it would be a really hard fight for us to win. Um, we, we decided to forego the undercutter uh, in place of additional top armor. Um, I stand by that decision, even though, um, you know, the undercutter is a horizontal weapon. So in theory, uh, it would be a good counter to huge. But realistically, our undercutter was just too low to the ground and didn't have enough reach to really do anything effectively to Huge's wheels, uh, especially those new Tegris anti-horizontal wheel wheels that they've uh, come with this season. Um, 
you know, so our strategy going in was we don't think we can damage their wheels or their frame. Um, we don't think that we can really get to their weapon before it spins up. We had seen how quickly they were able to spin up in the test box before the fight. Uh, and they've they've put a lot more power in their weapon this this season. And they, they didn't really get to demonstrate that in their, their first fight against Riptide. But we did see that Riptide was able to push them onto the screws and get them stuck sideways. Uh, and that's a, you know, controlling huge is not easy, but it's a strategy that we've seen be effective in the past. Um, so that was really our only hope was to get to the side of huge, uh, maybe stick a fork through their wheel, tangle them up, uh, push them into the screws and, and hopefully get them stuck. Uh, that being said, huge is shockingly nimble for a robot its size and that that was not going to be easy and turned out to be basically impossible yeah i think we we faced huge really the best huge has ever been in its history all right so i'd like to get your thoughts on what you were thinking when you saw the damage coming straight out of this fight so let's take a look at some of the damage photos and footage that I got from right after the fight happened. You can see here the damage to the top plate of Retrograde and how Huge carved straight through it in that devastating hit to the front of our bot right towards the end there. Uh, well, so this hit happened directly in front of the driver's box. Um, so I... I saw it happen right in front of me. I mean, I saw their blade carve through the front of the robot. I could see that something was in fire inside. Um, assumed that it was the the lifter ESC um, that sits right behind uh, that front frame member. Uh, and basically, they, they cut straight through that ESC. Um, didn't really reach anything else internally. I mean, they, they jacked the frame up pretty good, uh, but internally, nothing else was damaged. Um, this hit was was like a bomb went off uh, in front of me. It was so loud. Uh, I actually like had, my ears were ringing for about an hour after the fight. Um, so it was an extremely aggressive hit. Um, when we, when we actually rolled it out into the battery tent that they have set up, uh, for you to clear your robot after fights, um, we could not get into the, the robot to get the batteries out because the top plate had curled over and blocked off some of the screws on the top panel. Um... So just to clarify, when Aaron's saying battery tent, what he's actually referring to is there's like a little canvas covering over top of the area that's like right outside of the arena doors. So after a fight, the both robots that just fought are wheeled out into this like outcropping area. And that area is outside, it is not air conditioned. The actual battery tent where the battery charging taking place happens is air conditioned. But we had to wheel the robot outside in like the 110, 120 degree Vegas heat um and try and disassemble it to the point where we could take the batteries out of the robot before we were allowed to actually go back into the air-conditioned battery tent and you can see that top plate kind of had a piece of metal that curled over it blocked access to some of the bolts that were on top which made it so that it was incredibly difficult for us to actually take off the top plate and take the batteries out so we were outside standing in the heat for what felt like over an hour just trying to get this plate off yeah and so they they also need to um get robots out of that tent quickly because robots from the next fight have to be cleared as well and so uh we were actually pushed out of the tent into the sun and had to run a um an extension cord 
out with a angle grinder to to cut the top plate off but we were in direct sunlight in las vegas in august uh for an hour and we had another fight that day so we we only had a few hours to basically rebuild the entire robot um so it was the most challenging day i've had on a battlebot set yeah, the thing that upset me the most about this fight was actually that it was supposed to happen the day beforehand, but got pushed back, since uh, there was another competitor that was loaded into the arena on August 27th, which was the day we originally slated to fight as like one of the last fights of the day. That robot failed to turn on, so they pushed their fight back, and that actually ended up kicking us out. So. Both Retrograde and Huge were sitting arena side for like two or three hours on the 27th, only to be eventually told that we had to go back to the pits and prepare for our fight the next day. But that really sucks for us because the pits opened pretty early in the morning. They closed at midnight and we would have had from like the end of filming fights 10 p.m. till midnight to start repairs. And then in the morning from like as early as 7 a.m. till about noon when they started filming the first session of fights that would have been such incredibly valuable repair time that we lost because the fight was pushed to the next day and then we already knew that we had another fight lined up our third fight for the fight night fights lined up for that same day so we then had to deal with an incredibly compressed film schedule and we were down one of our rather difficult to replace urethane wheels. We were dealing with all sorts of supply chain issues. It was really hard to find urethane for this event. Yeah, and the urethane that we, the only urethane we could find was not the the urethane that we normally use for our blood sports wheels. It was a less durable urethane by the same brand. Um, and so, yeah, we, we were fighting global supply chain shortages all over the place. Urethane was one of them. Um, and I, I will say that Huge was both the worst matchup for us and also the best because I think we learned more from this one fight than we would have otherwise. Uh, and it really exposed plenty of weaknesses in our design, um, our configurability, uh, durability, and uh, like those are the fights that hurt the most, but will ultimately make the robot much stronger and more competitive in the future. Yeah, I mean, the damage that we received in this fight is pretty insane. I mean, you can see this front plate used to be straight. That's like inch thick pocketed out 6061 aluminum, and it's bent like 10 degrees or something, which is ridiculous. There's so much damage that we suffered that it seems like so surprising that in retrospect it's like uh, i guess that's a thing that can happen now i mean like there's chunk taken out you can see exposed threads where those bolts went into the aluminum um they just tore straight through this panel like it was nothing and the steel guards in the front did nothing you see this bolt just like shifted where it was kind of coupled between two steel forks and they got pulled in opposite directions it's just kind of insane the amount of energy these battle bots have and that the weapon that huge has is able to dish out they hit like everywhere on the bot it's astounding yeah. the chains somehow survived on the lifter as well shout out to cobalt for getting more wrecked than us somehow and uh oh, taking this thing a bit. Yeah. oh yeah sorry ghost raptor will we get the bot back together in time and who will we be up against next well, you're just going to have to wait and find out. That's all I have for you today. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified if we post any more fight recaps to this channel for both Bloodsport or Retrograde. Our team's been very busy preparing for Season 7. If you haven't seen our little teaser for Season 7's Bloodsport already, by the way, make sure to check it out on the Bloodsport Instagram account, linked in the description. And don't worry, we're not sleeping on a new Retrograde either.